In the famous double slit experiment, we get the interference pattern in our detectors due to the wave-like evolution of the Schrodinger equation. Usually we make sense of this by saying that the particle goes through both slits simultaneously. However, if we observe it, it starts acting classical again, and we lose the interference pattern. Let's put a twist to the story. What if we put a detector at one slit only? How will the particle at other slit knows whether to behave classical or quantum? It turns out that the other particle acts classically as well. This is weird. This is highly non-local. The signal from one slit couldn't have propagated so quickly to the other slit since they could very well be in two different galaxies. Vaidman and Elitzer formulated this in a dramatic thought experiment, where instead of a detector, you put a bomb so sensitive that any interaction will set it off. They call it a quantum bomb testing experiment. Imagine you are a security officer working in the airport. There's a sus suitcase. There may or may not be a bomb inside it. Furthermore, this bomb is so sensitive that even the slightest interaction can detonate it. What will you do? Please think for a while. Let's do the obvious and put the suitcase in one of the slits in the double slit experiment. Okay, the bomb is like a detector. So there is a 50% chance that the photon will go through that slit and blast. But there is also a 50% chance that it doesn't go through it and instead goes through a second slit. Now, that photon will be classical and lose the interference pattern. You, as a security officer, whenever you see that an interference pattern is lost, can confidently deduce that there is a bomb in that suitcase. Let's consider a more straightforward version called the mach zander interferometer. The idea is pretty much the same as a double slit, but considerably easy to analyze. In the mach zander interferometer, a single photon is emitted from some laser source, which we send through the beam splitter. The beam splitter will split the photon 50-50. This splitting causes the photon to be in a superposition of two paths. These two paths are reflected by a mirror and pass through a second beam splitter. The second beam splitter will split each photon path into 50-50. Finally, here's where the magic occurs. These two photons interfere, and only one detector will click. This happens because the photons destructively interfere in the second detector while constructively interfering in the first. One can also think of this in the double slit experiment, where we have constructive interference in one fringe and destructive in the second. This exotic quantum property is in extreme contrast to the classical case. In the classical case, we would have both detectors clicking with equal probability, that is 50%. This 50 percentage thing is easy to see if you drop classical marbles in Galton board structure. If these marbles were quantum, you would have all the marbles in one basket. Now, it's time to place the bomb on one of the paths of the Mach Zender interferometer. Again, the bomb is just an analogy. Any detectors will do the job, but the detector is not so dramatic as a bomb. 50% of the time, the bomb will blast, but there is a 50% chance it goes through the other path. The mere fact of a bomb on the other path somehow causes this photon to be classical. This causes a 25% probability that detector 2 will click. This is in contrast opposition to the case without a bomb when there is zero probability that the second detector clicks. The statistics are as follows. Without a bomb, detector one clicks every time and the second detector never clicks. When there is a bomb, it will blast 50% of the time, but there is also a 25% chance that the second detector clicks. Whenever the second detector clicks, we can confirm the presence of a bomb. You can try to come up with classical schemes. This is usually thought to be an impossible task. This is all good, but we still have a 50% probability that this bomb will blast. Can we come up with a better scheme? There is a scheme that tells if there is a bomb or not while blowing it up with very low probability. This scheme is called the quantum Zeno effect. However, there is a price to pay. The price is that we have to loop the Mach Zender interferometer multiple times. Still, it is extraordinary that we can do that. 
The Zeelinger Group has experimentally verified quantum bomb testing experiments. Zeelinger, if you know, is the same guy who won the Nobel Prize for quantum entanglement experiments. Their experimental version includes the quantum Zeno effect. How do we interpret these results? Scientists usually argue that this is some kind of counterfactual information. If the bomb didn't blast, the photon should be in the first path. The analogy is that if there is no bat signal, there is no crime in Gotham. Scientists also rely on many world interpretations to explain this phenomenon. According to many world interpretations, the photon from the laser goes through both paths, but in two different universes. In one universe, the bomb will blast, but in a second, it doesn't. I wonder how they will explain the one with the quantum Zeno effect. If you ever met many world people, you can ask them. Finally, let's talk about some applications. First, the application is in biology, where you can get information about your samples without ever interacting with them. This experiment is called interaction-free measurement. It is nice because we won't destroy samples like this. In cryptography, bomb testing has been considered for counterfactual security. We can obtain information about the hacker without letting them know. The final application is in counterfactual computing. People have devised algorithms that don't even need a computer to run. It should just turn on. There are counterfactual communication protocols where you can communicate without sending energy sources like photons. I agree, this is all weird. I will put references in the description for you to follow up.